The following program is paid for by the Real Estate Radio Network. You're listening to Real Estate Radio Fresno on 105.9 The FM KMJ. Now, live in studio, your host, local real estate expert, Craig Barton. Well, good morning, Central Valley. I am your host, Craig Barton, and welcome to the Real Estate Radio Network, the most important hour of radio each week, right here on 105.9 The FM KMJ. Real Estate Radio is a show dedicated to bringing some rational thought to the crazy world that we live in and helping you to rebuild the Central Valley's housing and credit markets. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted advice, and that's exactly what you are going to hear right here every Sunday morning from 7 to 8 on 105.9, the FM KMJ. Thanks so much for joining us. The look on your face. Because you look at me before you intro me, so then I'm like, do I say something? Do I not say something? I'm saying something. Just You're so saying, you know, I'm saying just, something. Just put it out there. Good morning, so Craig. How are you? Are you? I, I'm doing great. Happy, Happy Sunday. Amen. Oh, you can show me a coat. Oh, really? Golly, I thought I was just bringing you coffee. Um, I thought that was a little performance anxiety on your part when you said, no. you, look, you look at me right before you, <laughs> as you're giving me the intro and you're saying, Speak. Do I say something? Speak. Do I not say something? Yeah. <laughs> happy Sunday. Uh, it is a happy Sunday. Did you have a good Mother's Day? I mean, you're not a mother, but did you I'm have not a, a good mother. Mother's Day last weekend? Yeah, I'm not a mother, but I know a few. Okay, good. I do. Did you treat them special? I did. I did my very best. Good. I nice. really did. I tried. All right. I tried hard. Good deal. How about Just you? checking on your how was your How was your Mother's Day? My Mother's Day was wonderful. I took my someday daughter-in-law, my mother, my sister, my niece, my daughter. We all went for pedicures. We had lunch all together it was down a in South Petty Valley. Thing. It was yeah. a Manny Petty thing. It was very relaxing, and then I went home and watched movies with my children. I mean, oh, I just had a really so great week, and my son, who's in basic training. Happy Mother's Day to me. Happy Mother's Day to you. Yeah. Yeah. It was nice. So, yeah. Good deal. It just really was, you know, it was a celebration it was nice. of spring and mom and, all right, now I'm back to work. And the planets were all in a line. All aligned. It was great. You got to love it. It was great. You got to love it. Well, as always, it is so good to have our special guest host, Michelle Pettis-Cavalli, here in the studio with us today. Michelle is a licensed realtor and a trusted... Did you hear that? Friend. I'm, I'm yeah. having some technical Are, difficulties. You, you, <laughs> They're like, lady, you broke the microphone. <laughs> Johnny, I'm good. I fixed it, buddy. That's We're good. What, that's what it sounds in radio land when, actually, that sounded like Mothra was attacking the city. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try this again. Good morning, Craig. Good Happy morning. Sunday. Hey, do over. Yeah, <laughs> do thank over. You. Thanks for joining us. Michelle is a licensed realtor. Thank you for stopping and her. It, I appreciate that. <laughs> if you haven't listened to And the Craig's trusted movies, friend. <laughs> trusted friend. Thank you. Yeah, not my trusted professional friend. Wowzers. That's where it really goes wrong. Well, Michelle, as always, it is so great to have you I'm here. just here for laughs. You're just a laugh a minute. Mm -hmm, a are. minute. Mm -hmm. Well, Michelle, the real the beauty of... It, it used to be you were the beauty of Real I am the beauty. Radio. There, is, there is no female host in the room, I so I'm taking was, all the credit. I thought it was until he told you that you had a face for radio <laughs> that you stopped being the beauty of real estate radio. Yeah, well, okay. I do have a face for radio. Don't you forget it. Okay. Well, the beauty of real estate radio is that it gives us the opportunity to reach so many people efficiently for one full hour each and every week. Our goal is to get you the timely and accurate truth about your local real, real estate market so we can help bring you back home fill in the blanks I, I really truly think we're gonna have to change that up a little bit because every sentence yeah I have something funny that I want to say and I'm trying to be so we need to break it up oh, yeah you just tell me where to put the, 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 the <laughs> okay fill in the blanks okay. and we can do it well, right. on today's show we're gonna take a closer look at the current real estate market and current real estate market conditions it's wow. it's quite crazy out it there is. as i said the other day um if you're standing on the bank and watching the river pass by it's the current is swift and there is an undertow absolutely yeah don't jump without <laughs> some good, without yeah. a without a rope. without some floaties we're mm -hmm. crying out loud at mm -hmm. least floaties well we're going to take a closer look at what are the steps to take if you are considering listing your home or listing your home if you owe more than what your home is currently worth or underwater mm-hmm 
And why does it play such a big part in today's real estate market and the Central Valley's real estate recovery? Make sure that you stay with us. Well, if you have any real estate or real estate financing related questions or questions regarding the information that you hear on our show, call us anytime on our off-air number, 800-979-3958. You can also check out our resources online at reofresnohomes.com. Or use press for keyword KMJ call Valley wide to get connected to us anytime. We'd love to hear from you. Well, Michelle, we keep using this press for keyword. My mm-hmm. question is, is mm-hmm. how many of our listeners actually went to press for dot com, followed the easy setup instructions, downloaded press for and use press for to stay in contact with the show? It doesn't ring my phone. It, it, what do you mean it doesn't ring? <laughs> it rings your phone. Well, it does ring my phone. So I don't know. What what are our numbers? Do we have numbers yet? You know what? Because I, I have 11 million listeners. You have one. Oh, great. So I'm thinking you might have gotten one call. Here we I, go. on the other hand, got the 11 million calling. Yeah. Did they all how's call? How's that working for you? I asked them all to call you. It, how's that working for you? Well, as long as you're happy, I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> I get enough. I have enough calls coming into my phone. I'm a happy girl. Well, Press 4 is really for all those times you want to stay connected to our show. Um, just go to the Press 4 website and follow the easy setup instructions. To call into our show, just use Press 4 keyword. KMJ, call Valley Wide. And in that example, Michelle's phone or your phone will call into our show. <laughs> One button really can do it all. Michelle, it's time for the hot property. You know why it's hot? Why? Because it's a hot property. I was at some hot open houses this week. Were you? Let me tell you, Manzanita mm-hmm. up in Oakhurst, mm-hmm. South, South Fresno yeah. on Friday, and then Madera last weekend. Yeah. That was some hot weather in yeah. these open houses. <laughs> I don't know if Even people it, are aware, but hut homes don't always have the air available yeah, for usually us. usually they don't have well, the air. Well, I didn't want to say that. But <laughs> <laughs> so I have to cool it off and take some waters. And yeah, no, good times though. Go. Good times. Some great, great uh, people that I met this last week. Good stuff. You know, great thing about HUD Homes real quick uh-huh. before we get into this particular HUD property. First 30 days, owner occupied only. only. So, so critical. Yeah. How many times is it a situation where folks are competing against investors and investors are our friends? And I, I work with a, a number of investors. But... Not competing with an investor out the gate, Mm -hmm. critical, really, really critical. Investors are necessary for helping us as far as our uh, ultimately our market recovery, and and they do take a uh, an important position in the market recovery. Um, That cannot be denied, but it's extremely important. It it makes it so much easier as far as owner occupied um, potential potential owner occupants. Putting a, a bid on a property and not having to com- compete with an investor within the first 30 days. Well, in those first time home buyers, it gives them the great opportunity to put bids on these homes where there's just, yeah, first time home buyers, it's a new game to them, it's a new sure. process. So having a little more time that is theirs is a great way to introduce them to this market. Most definitely. Well, this property address is 1188 West Ellery Way, Fresno, California, 93711. This particular HUD home, um, and again, a HUD home is uh, unfortunately someone that had FHA financing Mm -hmm. on it before FHA provides the underlying mortgage insurance. They stop making their payments to their servicer. Their servicer ends up taking the property back and then files an insurance claim with HUD. HUD then takes the property back and markets it as a HUD home. Um, this is a four bedroom, three bath, 2,828 square feet. This nice particular size. property is absolutely huge. Well, it's in a great area, too. I mean, I, and I say great because it's established. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's been there a long time. Most definitely. What's the year? 1969? 1969. And, and when you say 1969, on a 15,600 square foot lot with a pool, this home has been updated. Has been has updated. Okay. I can't stress it enough. Yeah. Um, it's located south of Sierra between Palm and Fruit Avenues, and this property was appraised recently, actually a couple, about a couple weeks ago, for two seventy. Um, the bidding deadline on this particular property is five twenty one. So that's this coming Monday night at eleven fifty nine Central Standard. Owner occupant only. Owner occupant only. Okay. But this this is the first the first. Uh, the 10 days that the property comes on the market is for viewing and bid submissions. So we're within that 10-day period. Um, so they my, have today and tomorrow to still view this property and put their bid in correct. before any bids are viewed. Before any bids are viewed. Awesome. Correct. Perfect. So definitely get your agent. If you don't have an agent, you can use an agent of your choice. But if you don't, definitely contact us. If you'd like more information about this hot property, give us a call anytime on our offer number at 800-979-3958 or use press for a keyword. KMJ Hot Property. And we'll send more information about this hot property right to your phone. We'll look for more hot properties each week right here on the Real Estate Radio Network. Well, now we're going to talk about find your new home segment. We just talked about one particular property. Um, Michelle, how do you find your new home? 
I've been wandering aim. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> wandering the streets aimlessly. I've been wandering the streets aimlessly. <laughs> Actually, David, it saves gas if you're just wandering. No, it no? wastes it, gas oh, if I'm okay. wandering because okay. I usually do that in a vehicle here in the valley. Okay. Nonetheless, nonetheless, I uh, I find properties through the MLS, gotcha. which is my most up to date information from mm-hmm. my agents out there. Um, and effectively, I'm able to search particular locations, particular pricing, particular age of home, pool, no pool, et cetera. Single story, two story, exactly. bed bath count. And to me, that's the most effective, efficient way mm-hmm. um, to get that information out to our, our public people. So important that you pair up with a local professional that is a licensed realtor that can help set up that search for you. And the reason I say that is this. There's a lot of resources out on the Internet. It can be overwhelming, but not always is the information that's fed accurate and up to date. If you're following your local multiple listing service um, through a portal, we call it a portal, that's set up by your local real estate professional, Michelle can do that for you, uh, and Michelle is great at it, Um, it will push accurate and timely information out to you every single time a property comes on the market. If a status change changes from Mm -hmm. active to pending, from pending to sold, from backup to whatever it might be, it pushes that information to you in your portal immediately. Correct. And I think that's really important for people to understand. I have clients that are in Georgia right now who are getting ready to relocate. Mm -hmm. And one of the, one of the, the interesting pieces is they just got the portal. Mm -hmm. And so they're getting these listings and they're calling immediately. (laughs) Well, they're not going to be out here for a couple weeks. And as as much as um, I can appreciate their excitement and want to go with that, I also have to caution them that most likely, based on what you and I are seeing out there, 99% of the homes that they're seeing go up are going to be gone by the time they get here. So your portal, when you set it up, it can Mm -hmm. actually be a very accurate tool to help your buyer understand exactly how this market is moving. And that's part of the process, educating the buyer as far as the baseline expectations Mm -hmm. concerned. If you see a property, how many times do you think, oh, the, you know, oh, honey, did you see that home? Yeah. Oh, it's great. Let's go. See. Oh, it pe- oh, oh, just gone. changed. Bye bye. <laughs> yeah, just changed. Well, pending. and the nice part with the portal is you get to watch that happen. You mm-hmm. get to see it come up active, and then you get to see it go pending or back up. So at that point, you're getting to watch the flow of the market, and you're you're becoming more educated in that in you're of itself. Getting conditioned. Exactly. Now, if, if houses are sitting. Mm-hmm. And we've seen it in the past. If houses are sitting for months and months and months and price reducing, people tend to wait because they want to see that production. In this market, it's just not like that. They're going quickly, so they're being priced effectively, and they're jumping off the shelves. Just like Pavlov's slobbering dogs. (laughs) (laughs) You see Okay, sorry, that was my psych reference for the morning. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Johnny's not sure what to do with us today. <laughs> Johnny, can you edit that out, buddy? Uh, yeah, thanks. <laughs> well, if you'd like us to help, Michelle can set up the portal for you. Um, contact us on our off-air number at 800-979-3958 or go to our resources online at reofresnohomes.com. If you'd like us to help you drive the bus or use press for keyword KMJ. Call Valleywide. And Michelle can help simplify the search for your new home. Well, let's turn to some of the top stories in the news. This was from the Wall Street Journal just within about a week. The new foreclosure tsunami. Foreclosure tsunami. Do tell. (laughs) Come on, really? That's a headline? Well, it's a big wave. Well, I get that. But they actually used that as the headline? They did. That new foreclosure tsunami. Still waiting. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, based on inventory, I'm waiting. So what are are you hearing out there on the street? (sighs) You know, a really great agent that we've done a lot of work with. I had a conversation with him yesterday, and he's like, yeah, I'm still waiting. So I'm not sure it's coming, Michelle. (laughs) That's what he said to me yesterday. I'm like, well, you know, you let me know if you hear anything, and I'll let you know if I hear anything. anything. (laughs) My people call your people. I'll let my people call your people. Well, it's interesting you say that also because um, Ron Quintero, who is the uh, CEO of the Real Estate Radio Network, he, uh, we do a monthly, or excuse me, a weekly conference call on Monday mornings. We talked about shadow inventory within the last 30 to 45 days, and uh, his message to all of us was, guys, it's, I don't care what you've heard, it's not out there. It's not out there based upon the numbers that we have seen. And he's got feelers all over the country. Most definitely. Yeah. I mean, we're in 85 different markets right at the moment. Right, so right. when it comes right down to it, the stats are, he, what his contention is, the stats are not going to lie. Well, for at least six months or so, a lot of people have been talking about a new wave of foreclosures threatening to smother the U.S. housing market. And and seriously, if there is a wave out there, it could be catast- uh, It could be a, a huge catastrophe. Sure. Catastrophe. Catastrophe for the market. Need help with that? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> catastrophe for the market. The big words, and you yeah. just finish my sentence. Okay, for me. perfect. Okay, good deal. Let's see, we work together so well. 
<laughs> so it, it, if you have an oversupply of properties, what's mm-hmm. going to happen as far as the market's concerned? Well, prices will go down. At some point, mm-hmm. if demand cannot keep up right. to that oversupply, unfortunately, we will see prices drop, which right. – None of us want to see that. Catastrophic. Mm-hmm. As far, that's that's the word I was looking for. Was catastrophic. Oh my goodness! I it could be a my, big problemo. Yeah, big yeah. problemo. <laughs> Analysisation paralysisation. Oh, stop making fun of me. Okay, I right. like big well, words. Well, the reason why there is this estimated foreclosure tsunami was because of the robo signing scandal. Mm-hmm. The settlement sixty days ago or thereabouts with the uh, five or forty nine states attorneys generals, mm-hmm. as well as the five banks: Wells uh, Wells Fargo, Bank of America. Citibank, Chase, and Ally Financial, formerly GMAC, Mm -hmm. the expectation was that because they have held back with foreclosures, really the process, because the challenge was that there was no legal basis to those foreclosures because the documents were signed fraudulently, and that over time that we would see this eventual wave hit the market. Well, we've seen seen an increase Mm -hmm. um, with, uh, with HUD properties. We've seen statewide an increase of about 336 percent just with one of the two asset managers that oversee the state of California so we have seen an increase but it hasn't been an influx it hasn't been to the point where you would see uh, demand affected in any way where you would say there's still such great demand we're under so so tell me this is it because those institutions are reevaluating the processes for each individual transaction that's that was on the books, ready to go, or is it that? Tell me more. Why? Why think, do we? Why? Why are we waiting still? What? What is the process? I don't think there's any Where's waiting. Where's the delay? Uh, you think they're from, just not in existence? I just think they're not in existence. Correct. Okay. I don't think there's any waiting. I think as a result of that particular settlement, mm-hmm. we've seen that they have begun. I, I saw another um, interesting article re- recently. Um, when you talk about the number of foreclosures, comparatively speaking, March of this year saw sixty nine thousand completed foreclosures compared with 85,000 in March of 2011 per core logic. Now, delinquency remains, rates remain unchanged, and at their lowest levels since 2000, July of 2009, in the thick, when we were in actually the thick of the financial crisis, um, they're not expecting this, you know, as a result of this robo-signing agreement, that there is going to be a flood, pure and simple. So, Market levels are at a at an all time low. I don't mm-hmm. recall the last time that I've ever seen them this low. Um, another in- interesting story that we saw in the news was Bank of America is also begins contacting distressed homeowners about principal reductions. And as part of the same twenty six billion dollars settlement that we were just discussing, uh, the bank has started noti- notifying about two hundred thousand borrowers that they may qualify for reductions of as much as one hundred thousand dollars on their current mortgage balances. Wow. Yeah, witnessing history once again. And and I've made it uh, well known as far as where my take is on principal reduction. Either way, the principal balance is going to be reduced. Right. In, in other words, you're either going to to you're either going to reduce the principal balance of the borrower that's in the property or you're going to short sale it and short your payoff or you're going to take it back uh, through the process of judicial foreclosure. Either, any Either of way, the three ways, it's going it, to get gonna, reduced. It's going to get mm-hmm. reduced. I guess the, the bottom line reason is, is are there enough reasons for them to, as a settlement, who qualifies? Can they reduce your principal balance? I'm, I'm telling you, our listeners out there, if you do have a mortgage that's, ser- that's serviced by Bank of America, pick up the phone. Yes, dial one eight hundred. No, <laughs> pick, pick up the phone. No, but they need to do their contact, research. Most absolutely, because there's some things that might be helpful. To and them. ask Bank of America, where is mm-hmm. my part of right. the actual twenty six billion dollars settlement? And if you get a hold of Bank of America and you do get some movement from there, make sure you call into our show eight hundred nine seven nine three nine five eight because we'd love again an update eight hundred nine seven nine three nine five eight we'd love an update to hear those success stories right um, of exactly what you are able to come up with I find their hundred thousand dollar figure quite interesting because property values in California are one of the highest in the nation <laughs> right and I mean really truly as much as 
Right. And I know we're in the lower sure. bracket of that sure. being in the valley compared to, you know, San Diego, L.A., San Francisco. But $100,000 is a big chunk of change. If that, oh, if you're huge. anywhere near that coming off your mortgage here in the if valley, that's amazing. If you've got a $200,000 mortgage yeah. and your house is worth one twenty five, and you're able to get 50 knocked off, you're $50,000 closer right. to really hopefully a light at the end of the tunnel. Absolutely. Well, after the break, we are going to talk about the current real estate market and how to help get you in the know as to whether now is a good time to list your home, right, Michelle? I, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> You're not going to want to miss this. You are listening to the Real Estate Radio Network here on 105.9, the FM KMJ. This program is brought to you by the Real Estate Radio Network. Visit realestateradio.us for more info. That's realestateradio.us. Thinking about buying a home? Find out how the HUD Home Store can help you. Visit HUDHomestore.com. Look at HUD homes available for sale near you or nationwide. Why HUD Home Store? HUD will pay up to 3% of the buyer's closing cost. The price of the home is based on an FHA as is appraisal, which is already completed, saving you an average of $400. And there is an owner-occupant priority bidding period during the first 30 days. Want to know more? Visit HUDHomestore.com. Mortgage interest rates are at historic lows, and there's never been a more affordable time to buy real estate. Whether you're looking for your first home, moving up, or your next income-producing property, let the mortgage professionals at Valleywide help. Valleywide Homes has been helping homeowners with their mortgage needs since 1997. When it comes to the Valley's real estate, we know our way around the neighborhood. Call toll-free, 800-979-3958. And put the seasoned professionals at Valleywide Homes to work for you. Valleywide Homes, NMLS number 342-062-235-952. California Department of Real Estate License, 0122 Zero. You're listening to Real Estate Radio Network with local expert Craig Barton. Now, here's Craig. Well, Michelle, now let's take a look um, into when I say market dynamics. What does that mean? Just exactly what does that mean in today's real estate market? Let's take a look at the dynamics yeah, of today's market. Because it's yeah. such an interesting, no, it's just such an interesting ebb and flow that we're watching. Um, History on all accounts. E exactly. Number one. Exactly. You can't go without saying that. History on. <laughs> I mean, the last time turn. we saw inventory this low was when the market was, you know, creating that bubble. Mm hmm. And now we're at the same situation where inventory is quite low, and we all know we have not recovered in total from this yet sure, sure. there's a lot of things still waiting to happen um you know i've got buyers who are sitting waiting mm -hmm. and i continue to i mean i'm one of those i'm one of those people things happen for a reason that's just my right, my, right. my methodology of life um and i am always consistently telling them if we don't get this offer there's always another house. The next best house yeah. is the, the next, next best, best house. house. Sure. Um, unfortunately, for a while there, we were talking about all the rehab and the renovation, which still is taking place out there in a lot of properties. Right. But as the numbers decrease on what's available, even that becomes not the conversation anymore. <laughs> I mean, the, the focus shifts from sure. whether it's a property that you can rehab because it creates greater opportunities for your sure. buyer mm -hmm. to now it's just a simple. Yeah, there's nothing in your zip code today. Sorry. I mean, you know, no, there's days seriously. like that where there's absolutely no, you know, I mean. And we're not talking just one zip code. We're talking, uh, I've got a client, multiple, multiple yeah. zip codes. Well, and I think one day we were looking at it this week. It was like 63 new listings went on and right. 68 went into pending right. on the same day or vice versa. Right. I mean, it's that neck and neck with what we're seeing. It's that many. And that didn't count our solds or backups or any of the other sure. stuff. It was just pending and actives that where we were looking at just how close they are going in in you know, parallel. Right, right. So right, right at the moment, roughly about 1,400 units, which is a little less than two months inventory. If you right. look on average, what we sell in or what what is sold within Fresno County on a calendar year, and I'm generalizing. Sure, but, sure, sure. Because it, it, again, has ebb and flow. Right, exactly. There's seasonal lows when you're, sure. when you're talking November, December, January, February. But on average, we, we have roughly about two months inventory, yeah. which is not a comfortable position for <laughs> buyers to be in. Uh, if we're north of four, between four and five months, mm -hmm. that's comfortable. Well, it gives them time. 
a, a, a whole lot more time. Unless a whole it's lot a of time home, to look at which it, the first several 10 days, properties, <sighs> make several potential considerations for an offer. Mm-hmm. At this point, we're we're like running to see the one property that went listed in Correct. the neighborhood right now. Right, that's been on the market for two days. That have has fifteen cards on the countertop that right. you find that you go back to the office and you check availability. With and the there's five company. offers already. Five offers already. So it's 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 yeah, it's becoming a little a little concerning out there for right. for for the public i mean they want houses they, right. the, the demand is high it feels like honestly 2004 mm-hmm. 2005 mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. beginning of 2006 mm-hmm. or halfway through let's say through mid to uh, say third quarter of 2006 mm-hmm. right before mm-hmm. the plane ran out of gas and let's 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 first of all call them our first time home buyers mm-hmm. trust me there are houses to be had out there. So not to worry. If you haven't found yours, there will be houses to be and had. Don't, and, and, why, and, and let me piggyback on that real quick. And don't feel like you have to check off all those concessions on your list that you're not willing to make. And you say, right. you know what? I'm just, I'm willing to make them. Right. I'm willing to sacrifice all these things. You no. know, don't pay more than the house is worth right. unless there is some other you know, because that is something that you're seeing puzzle. as far Absolutely. as overbidding is concerned. And I mean, I, we don't recommend that. However, there are reasons somebody might overbid, and, mm-hmm. and let's not hesitate to, to go into that based on market and what's going on out there, as well as. But don't don't overbid just because you're impatient. Right. Don't don't waste money. Let's be real with yeah, the market. And also make sure that you're not overbidding just be, just for the simple fact that your agent says, well, this is what you need to do. Right. And that once we get into contract and the property appraises and the dust settles, that and if it comes in less because it really is worth less, um, that we'll deal with it at that point in time. No. That is a very perilous strategy. When you are a client working with a, a real estate professional, that doesn't work. It doesn't, it doesn't work. sit well with me because I, I want honesty. I want people to be honest with me. Well, so if they're not honest with the offer I receive, mm-hmm. as an agent, I list my, I list a property for a client. We get a real offer. We accept that offer, and now you're telling me it's no longer real. Well, if what's your credibility? If it's an RE, I, I totally agree. If it's an REO, the asset managers are also privy to that Correct. because they understand this is not their first. You know, yeah, no, necessary. they've been doing it a few days now. Yeah, just a few days, yeah. and they understand if they yeah. get an offer that they feel is over market. You know what they're going to do? They're going to tie your hide yep. to a to a post, yep. and they're going to say, "Okay, sign this document here, and you agree." You're bringing in the cash, that baby. If, if the property <laughs> doesn't appraise, that's the first clue that you know that they're on to your strategy. Right. So it's really important to make sure that when you are submitting an offer, that it is real. real. It's based upon market. Never wants you to pay more Mm-mm. than what you feel comfortable mm-hmm. with, but more importantly, never wants you to pay more than what a property is worth. So current inventory, roughly about 1,400 units. What makes now the right time for a, you know, a potential seller to sell their home? Well, demand is high. Demand is high. Um, Rates are low, which Mm -hmm. assists those buyers in qualifying. So we have more qualified buyers out there right now than we anticipated. Weather. It's a beautiful, like I said, last weekend was beautiful. This weekend has been beautiful. We're going to consistently have some nice weather, which means people are out wandering. Sure. They're wanting to do home improvements. They're spending more time it's outdoors. It's time. that season right. of, of buying. Um, and school's getting ready to end. People are like, okay, if we're going to shift, we're going to move. Let's do it over the summer. Let's do sure. it before school starts again. Things like that right. come into play. If we're not in a contract on a property mm-hmm. or if we're not, we haven't decided to sell our property. Right. Right. I mean, realistically, you can't make it. And I'm going to go out on a limb here real quick. And this is, is it's somewhat dangerous, but I'm just going to say this. If your property is priced right, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to jump too far ahead. No. But if your property is priced right. Right. Mm-hmm. And this means priced right from the standpoint that it's not priced based upon what it was worth five years ago and what you think that, you know, because of the emotional ties that we're, we'll get to that later. But yeah. Yeah. I mean, really, if you're taking good advice from agents on what's been selling in the market, what in your neighborhood and it has is to going, be real. it has to be real. Let's talk about real. Mm-hmm. In fact, I was. Um, I was in a neighborhood in an open house not too long ago, and I did some comps before going to the open house so people who walked through could compare what was going on. Sure. There's a house in the market pending like $100,000 over anything else that sold in the last year. Right. Pending. I said, well, this one will probably be pending for a while because it, I mean, really, truly. (laughs) Or somebody has the cash to blow. Yeah, but I highly doubt. I mean, most people are not going to spend $100,000 over market for a house. Sure. But somebody was not necessarily real with their 
asking price when right. they listed that property. Sure. So let's you know let's make sure we're getting education. Let's get real. I mean, let's talk I've about put what's a going bunch on. Bunch of out money there. into my house. Mm-hmm. I we've lived here for fourteen years. Really? It's where our kids were raised. Mm-hmm. Do you it's, think the next person who lives in that house is going to have all those? Well, do you think emotional the, connections? Not. Exactly. Not. It's a business decision for their family. Make sure you make a wise business decision for yours in selling it appropriately by putting it on the market at the right price. Well, because the buyer is buying a house Mm -hmm. to turn into. Yeah, they're not buying your memories. To turn into a home. (laughs) Right. You you missed my tagline. I'm sorry. They're buying a house. No, I didn't miss it. I'm just ADD. They're buying a house to turn into a home. Johnny, can you get the Hallmark music on for it? Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, exactly. No, but it's true. It's a house. It's four walls, sometimes six, eight, whatever. But they're purchasing those walls to make a home. You're right. Certainly. It's just a house to them. It doesn't have, remember the day we brought the kid home from the hospital and, Mm -hmm. you know, Christmas with grandma. Remember the last grandma Christmas? Or the the, the amount of money that you actually spent, invested in your property. And a lot of times what will happen is you do do improvements. Mm -hmm. You do things that make the house nicer. And and, and we as agents, we understand that. Mm -hmm. At the same time, the market will only bear and the bank will only finance and lend so much. Sure. So that's where your buyers are limited. So let's be reasonable when sometimes, we're putting them on the market. Sometimes improvements, and this is this may be hard for some of our listeners mm-hmm. to hear, but I'm just being real. Sometimes improvements are really intrinsic, mm-hmm. meaning they bring value to you. Correct. But they don't bring value to the bottom line in terms of what your home can yeah. sell for. I, I have right? a great example of that. Go for it. Yeah. It, it, okay. yeah, painting the garage floor. Yeah. You know, <laughs> how much did it cost you to paint that garage floor? 50 wait. bucks, 100 bucks yeah, to paint? Right. I used not the, adding value I to the used, house. But I used that fancy schmancy I paint know. with the sprinkles. The two, the two part the two part epoxy process. Yeah. with the sprinkle you color. Know that. I you do. Know that? Yeah. I, I do. Oh, that, well, I know that well. I know that. But unfortunately, it that does not add value. value. Yeah, yeah. The, the appraiser doesn't really care. You know that it's gold pretty, pla- That gold plated <laughs> toilet? <laughs> Better take it with you. Because it's worth yeah. more. The bidet didn't add anything didn't either. Add any- <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. The pool well, adds a couple thousand. <laughs> the roof might help, but honest to God, let's be real. You know, if a seller also, I think one of the. To me, one of the huge, one of the biggest things is identifying where you're at in terms of what is your real estate landscape, Mm -hmm. Uh, in terms of creating a schedule of real estate, even if you only have one piece of property, what's the address of this property? What are the amenities as far as what does this property come with? What's the estimated value of this property? Mm -hmm. What's the mortgage balance that is remaining on it? Mm -hmm. What's your monthly payment? Principal and interest. Is it an adjustable or a fixed rate? Right. And then also, what are the principal, excuse me, the taxes and insurances that you pay on this particular property on a monthly basis? Understanding where you're at. And really, because that's your real estate landscape. Mm -hmm. Where are you at? Right. Does it make sense? Exactly. Are you in a situation? You know, and taxes. Mm-hmm. Over the last couple of years, a lot of adjustments have happened to this market, and some folks I know are paying higher than they should be for their property taxes. You may have purchased a property when yeah. it was two sixty five. Now it's worth one fifty. We need to, yeah. Some immediate relief may come from um, appealing that and, and having how that do you go about doing evaluated. That? You actually contact the assessor's mm-hmm. uh, office and ask them to evaluate for a lower tax base. Gotcha. Based on current property value. Sure. And so that can be done. Um, I don't know how quickly it's being done down there. I haven't checked recently, but it is something that can be addressed and could give a family, you know, rather quick relief of right. a hundred or two hundred dollars a I month. I talked with a buyer this week uh, that had, I say a, a, a homeowner this week that had purchased a property roughly three years ago, and what they purchased the property at, and really what their my estimation of market value was concerned, they would have saved themselves about seventy five bucks a month, mm-hmm. so you know, nine hundred plus right. annually. Um, but seventy five dollars a month on their um, on their tax assessment that's, that's pretty huge. That is that really is that's, huge. That's yeah, you know, it goes into your the college unfor- fund. The unfortunate thing, yeah, it goes into your college <laughs> fund. Your kids' college the fund. The unfortunate yeah. thing is it does mean that your house is worth less today than what mm-hmm. it was before. But it, you need to be real because when the dust settles, if you're able to get that property reassessed at a lower at a lower tax basis, that helps you really to truly have accurate, up to date. Um, data as far as your mm-hmm. real estate landscape is concerned so that you can better make that decision. Does it make dollars and cents? Do we need to? Um, are we forced to? Do we not have to leave? Are we comfortable where we're at? Are we upside down? And we'll talk more about being upside down mm-hmm. in our next segment. But um, we talked about something earlier about emotional versus market value. And I wanted mm-hmm. you to touch on that real quick. Um, this is, I think, 
something that is very common in the marketplace. Correct. If if someone still um, has made all the right choices, mm -hmm. has made their mortgage on time, mm -hmm. can continue to make those payments, mm -hmm. um, whether they're upside down or not, um, and talk about when it comes to emotional pricing versus market value um, and why those two are different. Well, emotional pricing is a situation where it's all on feeling it's not on what is mm -hmm. and that's that's the issue that we deal with as agents regularly but even more so in this market um, for instance I have some some folks that are retired and I was telling Craig earlier today they bought their house for fourteen thousand dollars back in 1968 or what, whatever it was really yeah in the good old days <laughs> you know it was not a new home then I think it was a HUD actually if I recall the story but oh, nonetheless wow. um, you know two years ago three years ago four years ago it was worth two hundred fifty thousand mm -hmm. dollars Okay, now they're back where everybody else is at, right. and the house that they've had since 1968 is worth about a hundred, hundred and fifty thousand, somewhere in there. Right. I wouldn't know specifics, but nonetheless, they think it's worth. They still think it's worth two hundred fifty thousand, mm -hmm. and I'm like, but, if you really want to move this property and relocate and downsize, right. you got to get real. You got to get real, and you've made it a good amount of profit mm -hmm. that most people won't see in their lifetime, especially those that have been sitting in houses that are upside down right now. You're getting a hundred and something thousand dollars in profit right. from the time you purchase that home. And and they don't that doesn't that doesn't even ring to them because they're thinking about how much it's worth that, you know, yeah, their kids went to school there their whole entire lives and but the house was just worth X amount of dollars. Let me ask okay, you this. It doesn't work that so way. So somebody's buy, somebody's got a bar of gold and mm -hmm. they go down today mm -hmm. and they sell it. Yeah, they're going to get a good chunk of change. Yeah, they're going to get a good chunk of change That's depending right. upon how much gold they have. But it's only worth that X. today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Today. Today. Tomorrow, Who knows? the price fluctuates. Right. So the unfortunate thing is if, and it goes to show you, and granted, there's some people that are just so stubborn that they... Mm -hmm. They're going to sit. The, the, these folks gonna, are going to sit. Yeah. And that's okay. Yeah. That's okay because until they wrap their mind around it, they're going to have to. Additionally, I think we were talking about a lot of different reasons people go into selling a property. Um, divorce. You know, the memories mm -hmm. are there, sure. the death of a parent. I mean, you know, you're having to eliminate their property. Right. There's a lot of emotional baggage that goes along with buying and selling a property. That is why you seek consult. Correct. That is why to try you to have to take the emotion out of correct. it. Correct. Because your possible. emotions we need to separate from what are true comparable sure. pricing in your neighborhood. Even though it may not feel right, we're giving you legitimate documented information which shows you the truth. You may and not you have like to it. get real you with don't the have truth. To like it, Correct. But Correct. it is the truth. Right. It's not emotionally driven. Well, if you have any real estate or real estate financing related questions or just questions regarding the information that Michelle and I cover here on the show, we would so love to hear from you. Call us anytime on our off air number at 800 979 3958 or check out our resources online at reofresnohomes.com or just use press for. Keyword Michelle. KMJ Call Valley Wine. To get connected to us anytime. They can actually call us if you use Press 4 or just call the number, right? Well, after the break, we're going to have <laughs> the difficult conversation about some of the variables that may force you to consider a short sale. We'll see you on the other side of the break. You're listening to the Real Estate Radio Network here on 1059, the FM KMJ. This program is brought to you by the Real Estate Radio Network. Visit realestateradio.us for more info. That's realestateradio.us. Thinking about buying a home? Find out how the HUD Home Store can help you. Visit hudhomestore.com. Look at HUD homes available for sale near you or nationwide. Why HUD Home Store? HUD will pay up to 3% of the buyer's closing cost. The price of the home is based on an FHA as is appraisal, which is already completed, saving you an average of $400. And there is an owner occupant priority bidding period during the first 30 days. Want to know more? Visit hudhomestore.com. All it takes is one call to the professionals at Valleywide Homes and you'll start building wealth in real estate. Whether you're looking for your first home and moving up or your next income producing investment property, let the experts at Valleywide Homes help. There's never been a better time to get into the real estate market. Visit our website at reofresnohomes.com or call toll free 800-979-3958. That's 800-979-3958. And put the seasoned professionals of Valleywide Homes to work for you. You're listening.
listening to Real Estate Radio Network with local expert Craig Barton. Now, here's Craig. Well, Michelle, before the break, you you really began to touch on some of the reasons that someone, wh- whether it's listing their property, mm-hmm. um, uh, it, that it is what we would consider a traditional sale, sure, or whether they're considering listing their property as a short sale, some of the reasons might, might be the same. Right. What are some of the reasons that you see, as far as the market's concerned, that someone might be considering actually listing their property? Um, we've talked to some folks who have multiple properties and maybe cash flow has has dissipated it's not getting the cash right. flow it once did mm-hmm. um relocation mm-hmm. someone needs a relocation due to work um maybe they've lost some income gotcha and they can no longer afford the house um overtime bonus mm-hmm. commissions income and a lot of that's going on in our market right you right know, a lot of people have had adjusted incomes i know um certain people have taken price or uh, salary reductions in order to ke- help maintain companies that they work for and whatnot Isn't and that amazing? being team players yeah. i mean i think that's a great thing though that when you have when you have the kind of honesty where you can say hey guys here's what we got to do in order to keep going right and they say okay i'll do it in order I mean, to, that's in, a commitment in, in order to preserve the collective in order right. to preserve everyone and all of their jobs otherwise if you don't do this mm-hmm. that means that Susie, bill and jeff you guys are out of jobs you're gone right exactly and i think you and i were talking about this in general just the amount of business owners that we've seen out there who've come to us and talked to us in regards to their situation where they at some point in time when the market was booming they pulled a line of credit or they pulled cash out of their home in order to additionally finance companies mm-hmm. and their businesses to keep things moving in the right direction um, and grow and whatnot and then now the tailspin that they're facing because one their house is underwater two they've had to cut and streamline at the office or at the company that they have created or right. continue to, to to work. And so they're trying to figure out, what, what do I do here? Am I going to lose Sally, Joe, and Penny, mm-hmm. or am I going to lose my house or short sell my house? And so, so those are some tough decisions that are being made out there. Certainly. Loss of a spouse. Did we say loss of a spouse? I don't think we did, but um, in some ways that could be a good thing. In some ways that could be a bad thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm teasing, sorry. Well, it depends upon how you lose it. them. Did you lose them yeah. in the backyard? I have a really did you, great, did you have lose a, them at the yeah. fair? I have or? a really great friend who's a widow, so I respectfully will, you know, Just say refer that, to that that happens. <laughs> um, and then there's other reasons that we choose that to I happen. I feel really guilty chuckling I, that I don't know your friend. No, um, it's okay. She would, she would respect you. It's all, all right. good. What about if you have an adjustable rate mortgage? Wow. You know, I have several people I've run into recently who lost their houses and are in apartments now because they had an adjustable rate mortgage and they sought no information about how to get out of it. Yeah, no, they just said, oh my gosh, it's way higher than I can afford. I can't do this anymore. And just packed up and and moved. And packed up and moved. I've, and I keep running into more of those folks, and so I'm just like, okay, let's 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 stop the presses right now, right, right. and let's say, okay, there's a lot of different reasons mm-hmm. people have for facing this. Market being one, uh, choices being another. At the end of the day, you can't sit idle. Right. And and right now, based on what market's doing, we just talked about the ebb and flow. Mm-hmm. You know, 1,400 houses on the market is not very many. I have clients waiting for houses to go on the market. So if this is something that a client would be considering, now is a really good time to, to, to address the research if, involved. If there's, let's say this, if there's nothing that the servicer of their particular mortgage can do to help them. Right. If it's Bank of America, there might be a principal reduction. There might be. If it's Bank of America, it might be an interest rate reduction. Mm-hmm. If your loan is serviced by Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac, mm-hmm. Um, we might be able to help you as far as determining if it is and if there is any potential relief as far as reducing your interest rate. Right. However, though, if it's none of the above, and there's a there's a significant number of, of mortgages out there right. that don't fall under mm-hmm. the above, mm-hmm. then what are your options? What are your options? And you need to seek counsel as far as a professional is concerned mm-hmm. to know where are you at in terms of your real estate? What you know? Have you have you exhausted all options as far as your servicer is concerned? And if you have, then short sale or just a sale right. might be. Uh, you may not be underwater as we would call it. Right. Maybe you do have some equity, mm-hmm. but once it's a situation that you can, you know, you take into consideration all the fees and the cost of actually marketing mm-hmm. your property and selling your property, there might be little or nothing left, left. unfortunately. Except relief, and I right. think that's the part that people forget. Relief from the, the stress. Sure, sure. 
of, of not knowing what tomorrow holds. It's making that decision that you're going to choose what tomorrow holds based on the choices you have available and the sure. information that you seek out. So maybe it's a case that some of our listeners just need to start with the ter- determining where they're at mm-hmm. um, and determining that they really just need to get their financial house in order. Mm-hmm. Correct? I agree. I agree. And the schedule of real estate that you mentioned is so key to that. Um, how much is how much do they owe? How much are they paying? What mm-hmm. is their homeowner's insurance? What is their tax uh, Taxes monthly and or annually? Sure. You know, what does that picture look like? And then let's evaluate. What's the market in their neighborhood look like? The sooner you and I say this as a as a as a real generalization, but it, it's so applicable because some folks this hasn't happened to. But the sooner you determine exactly where you're at, so we need to know, we need to get the GPS Mm -hmm. out and figure out exactly where you are at. Uh, The sooner you figure out where you're at, the sooner you can get your financial house in order because for a lot of folks, they actually laid waste to or Mm -hmm. they devastated their financial future as far as retirement's concerned. Do Mm -hmm. you have any retirement? We had um, Gary Winter here on the show uh, a number of weeks back from Transamerica Financial Advisors, and we're talking about your financial house Mm -hmm. and getting it in order and do you have life insurance and do you insure i mean let's talk about just the basics Mm -hmm. are you know are you able to pay your bills okay above and beyond that do you have any life insurance in place would your would the loss of you your income create any any financial hardship as far as Mm -hmm. someone that you love if that's the case well let's start there right and if it and let's just say this if you had to drain a retirement account a 401k cash out what have you you know, it's 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 time to start over. And well, and you've I, got to cut the fat. Exactly. And I think the, the issue is when you bought that house or when you got into that transaction, there was a roadmap in your mind. Mm-hmm. Um, or maybe not, but generally there is but a plan. But variables some, changed. Correct. Something's changed since then, and the, the, the evaluation of that roadmap to get you where you need to be needs to be done. How many children do you have? Are they going to need braces? Do they have to go to college? Those things weigh heavy yeah. on you, and if you don't put a plan in place to get there, certainly there's a sense of failure and loss, and we need to we need to address that and know that there's a lot of people in that situation, and what are the steps they need to take? You know, it's interesting because one of something just popped into my head. We may sound like a broken record because each and every week there's so many things that are consistent as far as our message is concerned. However, each and every week there's new people that mm-hmm. listen to the show that call in and we have the conversation. Do you know where you're at? No. Do you know what your financial landscape is as far as real estate, as far as life insurance, mm-hmm. as far as retirement? No. Um, and we have the same question. I mean, we have the same, honest to goodness, conversation over and over and over again. So if it does, bear with us. But for, for those of you that are listening to the show for the first time, mm-hmm. we've got to help you get your financial house in order. Well, if you have any real estate or real estate financing, related questions or questions regarding the information that we cover here on our show, again, we'd love to hear from you. Call us anytime on our off-air number at 800-979-3958, or you can check out our resources online at REO Fresno Homes, or just use press for keyword KMJ Call Valley Wide to get connected to us anytime. Well, after the break, if you're considering listing your home for sale, what are the steps that you need to prepare yourself for that journey? Stay right here. You're not going to want to miss this. You are listening to the Real Estate Radio Network here on 105.9, the FM KMJ. This program is brought to you by the Real Estate Radio Network. Visit realestateradio.us for more info. That's realestateradio.us. Thinking about buying a home? Find out how the HUD Home Store can help you. Visit HUDHomestore.com. Look at HUD homes available for sale near you or nationwide. Why HUD Home Store? HUD will pay up to 3% of the buyer's closing cost. The price of the home is based on an FHA as is appraisal, which is already completed, saving you an average of $400. And there is an owner-occupant priority bidding period during the first 30 days. Want to know more? Visit HUDHomestore.com. Mortgage interest rates are at historic lows, and there's never been a more affordable time to buy real estate. Whether you're looking for your first home, moving up, or your next income-producing property, let the mortgage professionals at Valley White help. Valley White Homes has been helping homeowners with their mortgage needs since 1997. When it comes to the Valley's real estate, we know our way around the neighborhood. Call toll-free, 800-979-3958. And put the seasoned professionals at Valley White Homes to work for you. Valley White Homes, and MLS number 342-062-235-952. California Department of Real Estate License, 0122-846. Zero. 
You're listening to Real Estate Radio Network with local expert Craig Barton. Now, here's Craig. Well, Michelle, if you're considering listing your home and you've been listening to the show this morning, whether it's a traditional sale or potentially a short sale, what are some of the things that you need to keep at the forefront as far as really navigating the minefield and, and navigating yourself through the process? Well, first and foremost, identifying an agent. And it, identifying an agent that you feel trust in, because I think that's huge. That you know, like, and trust. Know, like, and trust, mm -hmm. or have been referred to. I think that's huge in this market. Um, someone you feel you can speak to freely, right. because really this is, this is a time when you need to put it, all your cards on the table and be honest yeah. with the agent, so the agent can be honest with you, and you can get those facts that and you need. to educate you. I think Absolutely. that's so, so critical. Too many times... Uh, well, I shouldn't say too many times. It's actually, it's unfortunate because the referral is usually predicated by mm -hmm. someone saying, Craig, I've got this client or this mm -hmm. friend of mine that... Um, so you know, they're, frustrated. They're so or... frustrated. They, they <laughs> sat down with another agent. And they kind of felt like they were, you know, run through the cattle chute. Mm -hmm. And um, I know that you'll take the time with them. I know that you'll help to educate them. And that is so, so critical. It's sad to hear because really... If you educate, everything else takes care of itself because the, the client will feel comfortable if you take the time to educate. Well, and I think the important part, we've talked a lot about the ebb and flow of the market. Mm -hmm. Things are constantly changing. And so what that agent may have shared with you or what that experience was may it may have been it's about changed, the time. Right. Exactly. It's a window. It's, it's a whole a different time, time now. Sure. I mean, that could have been three weeks ago and things have adjusted since then. We've right. got more information on different things. So people need to know that it's not necessarily always, you know, it's not someone who doesn't want to take care of them necessarily, mm -hmm. but it's somebody who may be outdated on what the information truly currently right, is. Right, 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 right. Because they, they're not up to date necessarily. Well, and also consulting your CPA, so, so critical. Touch well, on that right Exactly. Here. The CPA is going to educate you as to whether or not you may face tax consequences. Mm -hmm. And I think we were talking a little bit today about the tax consequences for having taken cash out of a home. There are some at some point. Whether if it it's wasn't a, used for capital improvements, correct. It, there could be so tax consequences. So if you took $50,000 out of a house and and now your mortgage is upside down and you're having to face a short sale, a CPA is going to be able to educate you to what right. your tax repercussions are. But Don't leave home without that. Yeah, but let's, <laughs> let's take that another step <laughs> in that if, if there's $2,000 in tax repercussions mm -hmm. or $500 a month that you're upside down, guess what? Two grand in tax repercussions, a little bit less than 500 bucks for the next... 28 years. years. Sure, right. So, right, I mean, right. you've got to look at, and you need to have those facts in order to make an educated decision. So I think the CPA is huge. Your schedule of real estate, you mentioned the schedule of real estate. Mm -hmm. That is that is elementary. We've got to know the details of it. It can't be um, about or, uh, I think I pay 60 bucks. No, let's get it all, the documents out. Because yeah, not about. Not, not about. kind of, almost, maybe. We've got to like know that. what we're dealing with in order to help. Um, and then your taxes, same thing, value. That agent that you work with, that you select, is important in getting you firm information on what your house is truly worth, this. not emotional worth. Just one real quick side note. When you're talking about that agent and value as far mm -hmm. as your property is concerned, finding someone that's willing to tell you the biggest number out there on the market isn't necessarily mm -hmm. the person that you want to be dealing with. It's the number that is supported by last 90 days. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You've got to be able to provide something. You don't just want to say, well, listen, the client wants to sell it for 215 Hey, I think we should list your property at 215 doesn't work work that no, way because no. you're setting yourself up for disappointment and mm -hmm. ultimately failure because you're going to be disappointed first before you fail. And then it and sits it, and you're, right. you're in limbo that entire time. Now let's talk about short sale because I think that's important mm -hmm. because th that, that home resider, the home owner is the gatekeeper, not necessarily mm -hmm. the same role that you would in a traditional sale. So maybe you can share a little bit about what you've seen and, and, and how that role is different than a, trend, a, than a different... Than a traditional sale. Right, right. Yeah, if you're a seller in a short sale, you're, you have a responsibility, and that's really trusting your agent, set a fair price based upon market, and let's move that property. Right. I mean, really and truly. So your job is to keep the emotions out of the equation, make sure you can cons consult with your tax advisor, and at that point... You know, and I don't say this in a derogatory fashion, but get out of the way because it's it's so important to make sure that you feel comfortable with your agent, that you've got a fair market price, and that you move that property in a timely fashion. And also that when it comes time for gathering all the information that's necessary for the short sale package that has to be submitted to the you lien have to holder or lien holders, you are. Yeah. A participant. Mm -hmm. There's documentation that you're going to need to sign. It's not a. It's it's not like applying for a new loan. It is very much the same type of information, 
but you've got to be an active and willing participant. And that's so, so critical because you can be a hindrance. Trust mm-hmm. me. I've got a short sale going where I'm representing the buyer and the selling agent's having a hard time getting her seller to get online to fill out some information that's necessary in order to complete the short sale process. That's frustrating for me. That's frustrating for my buyer. It's frustrating for the selling agent. So be an active participant in resolving that issue in your life. You've got to be an active <laughs> participant, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, also, let's talk about this. Remember, when you're listing a property, that service is free. It's paid out of the transaction. Never should anyone ask for a fee up front. There's tons of scams out there, whether they're foreclosure scams or whether they're short sale scams where someone says, hey, I will list your property for a Mm-mm. fee that's don't paid do it. up front. Absolutely positive. Your agent don't do it. is on your team. They're your advocate. They are your... Um, your direct link to the bank. They are going to be doing those conversations for you. You want somebody on your side who's who's honest. And make sure, I would say, second to lastly, make sure that you're asking for relocation mm-hmm. assistance. Every, in every instance, there is some monies that may be left on the table if you don't know or if your agent doesn't know to ensure that you ask for relocation assistance. And there's some listeners out there, you know who you are if you're listening in again today, that we've helped... Uh, because I've had those conversations with some listeners, w- with some listeners in terms of call-ins. Um, so, so important. The last thing is opportunity for market stabilization. Mm-hmm. None of the, the market does not stabilize unless we purge the market of all the short sales, all the underwater foreclosures, all that good stuff so that we can help normalize the market. Absolutely. And that's what we're seeking. Well, if, I tell you what, if you have any real estate or real estate financing related questions or questions regarding the information that we cover here on the show, Michelle and I would love to hear from you. Call us anytime on our off-air number at 800-979-3958 or check out our resources online at reofresnohomes.com or just use press for keyword KMJ call Valley Y to get connected to Michelle and I anytime. Well, a big thank you to Michelle Pettiscavalli, my special guest, my trusted and local trusted friend. friend. And don't forget it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For joining us today. And as always, a big thank you to Johnny B. Behind the mics, Johnny, you make us sound so good. Our goal is to get you the timely and accurate truth about your local real estate market so we can help bring you back home. Don't forget to tune in to the Real Estate Radio Network next Sunday at 7 a.m. on 105.9, the FM KMJ. Local news, local talk. Make it a great day, Central Valley, and we will see you next week. The preceding program was paid for by the Real Estate Radio Network.